<laughs> Welcome back to the interview couch. This is John again, John Rickroll, apparently, uh, together here with Maven, Swedish StarCraft 2 caster um, and general just esport personality here. How are you doing, Maven? How is your night so far? It's actually been pretty good. We've been, uh, well, I've mostly actually just been using the crossbow, uh, but I did try out the bowman, so the game's pretty good. Uh, a little bit problem with the service, but as long as I can play, it was actually pretty fun. Right, so you come from a very long history of RTS gaming, um, except for a while then that you play before, but that doesn't really transfer. But do you feel like any of your kind of thinking from RTS moves over here? Because it's kind of a skill and custom based game. Well, not, not like f from the RTS, maybe not that much, but from the ARTS, uh, Dota, for example, like the team play, maybe. Uh, but it's, it's like if I, I would put this on a spot, I would say it's like in a new genre where. It's it it feels like for the first time when you play it, it feels like a really slow game, but the skill cap is pretty high because the movement and the way you approach an enemy, and depending on your skill set, your perks and everything, uh, it just it feels like a a new sensation, like a new a, a new, really new and fresh game. That's that's the general image I get from the game. So you're talking about there's a very high skill cap. Do you feel that the customization adds to kind of a lot of different skill caps? Because you use a lot of archers, but that doesn't really transfer to being a good swordsman. Um, so do you feel that this game has a lot of potential to actually have, you know, you can't be a jack of all trades? Or what is like your, what's your predictions for this? Um, well, I mean, as a player, you could probably try to master both and eventually you'll be able to, you know, <laughs> be able to play both an archer and a melee hero. Uh, the same way you can play both, uh, both Protoss and Zerg, like, but you're not going to be the best at it. Like, so if you pick one, then obviously you're going to be better than people to play two. Uh, but it's, it's really different because, well, mostly you, you don't actually just uh, aim and shoot. You actually have to charge up a shot. Uh, crossbow it takes forever, longbowman it takes slightly less than forever. Uh, whereas for a melee hero, you just or class or whatever. I don't know. Like I, say, I keep saying, I keep saying hero because well, I mean, all all these guys were heroes. They're a British Br British people in the 1600s. I mean, they were all heroes uh, in comparison to people of this day. So. Yeah, of course, man. <laughs> I idolize these guys because they were running around in, you know, tight, tight underwear and, like, chainmail on them, so... <laughs> That's your everyday, like, garnison? <laughs> yeah, uh, no, but I think the game, it definitely has, like, you know, once you get into it, you, you can sit for hours and just trying to, you know, try to see, all right, when do I need to use this... Uh, <laughs> I can't, I can't even speak. People are, are you talking. People speaking? Were you talking? People, I'm uh, like when when I when I have an interview, people like talk over me and whatever. But, uh, but you know, like just trying to find out when to use the the different kind of uh, hits with a melee hero, or just how to hit someone with a bow, like the trajectory of the arrow and stuff like that. Uh, it's really really fun to do that, but it's also seems like you know the casual player will probably not enjoy it because they go into the game and they get slaughtered even they're like they try to press, press the buttons and they try to you know do like they approach all the other games that are being created uh, right now like let's say uh, Call of Duty and maybe League of Legends and stuff like that you go in and you basically like alright this is how you play it even if you don't uh, have played for like 10 years or something you can go in and get a general feel but here uh, there's so much like little details where you know how the hell does my arrow fly and you try to fly and, you, and then you're like but I don't even see the arrow and then you have to like really really like alright there's the arrow how did it fly because at the first time like the first 10 shots I did with the bow I didn't even see the arrow I was like alright where, where did my bow go like well, where, where did the arrow fly like is, did it hit the tree no that was somebody else and did it hit someone no but I didn't get any hits and then you're like at point blank and trying to shoot at someone and you still don't get any damage like I have no idea how to hit with a bow so I started using crossbow and everything worked out so you're saying crossbow is a no-skill weapon eh well no but it's easier to hit because you don't have you don't have the same trajectory with the arrow We can't even hear him talk in this microphone, but he said it's an iron sight, so it's more familiar, but that's correct. So the crossbow is easier in some ways. The bow is very good if you learn to master it, though. 
Um, so ultimately, it sounds like you had fun with the game, even though it had kind of a high skill cap. So after you get into it, you you got to enjoy it. So do you think you'll play more? Um, I'll de I am definitely gonna play some more. Uh, how much? That's well, we'll see. Like most of the games, you know, you you have fun the first the first few hours. You have the first the fun. You have a lot of fun the first week. Uh, prime example, like Diablo 3. I had a blast the first week, played it like so much. Like every day I was at a LAN playing it. And then after a week, it was like, well, now I don't have anything to do. But here, it seems like, well, you're going to have something to do all the time because everybody else is going to get their skills unlocked. And apparently, from what I've heard from the developers and stuff, they're going to implement some new stuff, some new weapons, and maybe new maps. Like, So it changes everything. and. Hopefully, it's going to be a lot of fun in the future too, as it is right now. Just keep innovating the maps and stuff, and it'll go really far. Well, I'm very glad to hear, and you're correct. We are planning to add a lot of new maps, weapons, DLC, but not in the normal, you have to pay for the DLC method. So, yeah, um, so there's going to be a lot of new content rolling out continuously after launch, which is, of course, today. Um, so, before we uh, cut this off, do you have any, like, anything to say to the viewers? Like, anything to say about yourself or, like, spoof yourself? <laughs> um, well, uh, yeah, well, the only thing commercial-wise is, like, uh, the Swedish Championship is going to start off uh, soon. You go to esportsm.se uh, and you can check out when that's going to happen. That's probably it. And follow me on Twitter. That's Mavencast on Twitter. Other than that, it was really fun to play. And if you haven't bought the game yet, uh, I definitely recommend it. It's one of the games that you should definitely try. And if you fail the first time or the first 20 times or the first month, then just <laughs> <laughs> keep practicing and maybe you'll be able to like beat the guys anyways. Because it, it really seems like a game where you just have to know the details and know everything about it. And then you'll have a lot more fun. All right. Thank you, Maven, for this short interview. Uh, we'll go back to Matt now, um, probably back in-game, actually.